Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today it's time to talk about the top 10 tool cards in the Pokemon trading card game. Now, they fit into tiers, shall we say. There are ones which are really good, some which are okay. No honourable mentions today, because to be honest, I, I got a fairly good top 10. I don't think we need any honourable mentions. So straight in at number 10, Weakness Policy. This is a tool which takes away the weakness of the Pokemon to whom it is attached. And this sounds like a really, really good card. It sounds like the kind of thing everybody wants and everyone will play. But it actually saw very little play. Now, it did see play in things like Primal Groudon, which were very, very slow. Four energy to get going. Big investment. You wanted to stop your opponent getting big KOs. Fair enough. But the thing is that people just play stuff like Focus Sash to avoid one-hit KOs or Hard Charm to reduce the amount of damage done. Weakness Policy saw a bit of play in Primal Groudon, but to be honest, most decks just had better options. And that's why it comes in at number 10. Now, just as a quick side note here, we are only doing Primal Clash onwards. We are looking standard format only. There are, of course, other ones like Focus Sash in Expanded. In at number 9, Poison Barb. A lovely new tool that says that if you damage a Pokemon with Poison Barb attached, you are now poisoned. You take 10 damage between turns. Now, I'm putting Poison Barb in here on a little bit of faith. It's not really seen much play at all, but it just seems really nice. Any cards released in the future that take advantage of Poison, things like the old Dragalgi would have used this. There are just so many options here that although it's not great at the moment, I really think this has potential in the future, and it's that potential that pops it in at number 9. In at number 8, Bent Spoon. And Bent Spoon is a lovely little tool that prevents all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage. So something like a Froakie wouldn't be able to paralyze you if you've got Bent Spoon attached, but maybe the biggest use for this so far is the promo Jirachi. They try and discard an energy and then gain immunity. They aren't able to do so. They cannot discard the energy, and because they can't discard the energy, they don't get the immunity. Ben Spoon has seen a little bit of play here or there. It's been a fairly niche card, but the fact that it's seen a bit of play and the fact that it's got that potential brings it in at number 8. In at number 7, Lucky Helmet. Lucky Helmet is a cool little card that everybody wants to play, but very few people actually have. Now, Lucky Helmet basically says that when you get damaged by an attack, you draw two cards. And this has seen play in Gyarados. And the reason it's seen play in Gyarados is because you need your Gyarados and your Magikarp and your Stadium and your double colorless energy. It's quite the combination to pull off. And in the late game, your opponent is going to want to end you, put you on a low hand size. So if you play Lucky Helmet, they attack you and you get to draw cards, make it more likely that you're going to get that combo. Although as a side note, be careful with Lucky Helmet. You do have to draw cards when you get attacked. And we did see a game at the live stream in Sheffield Regional Championships where somebody actually lost a game. They got decked out by their opponent attacking into a Lucky Helmet. Couldn't draw a card at the beginning of their next turn and lost the game. But it's only ever really seen play in Gyarados, which is why I can't put it any higher than number 7. And in at number 6, Assault Vest. Now, Assault Vest has seen a little bit of play, used to see quite a lot of play. It's kind of dropped off the map a little bit. Assault Vest says that you take 40 less damage from any Pokemon attack from a Pokemon with special energy attached. Now, this did see play in Entei, the one that could have two tools attached, because then something like Night March with a double colorless did 80 less damage, because the Fate of Double Ancient trait allowed you to attach two of them. It's seen play in Raikou, where it combos very, very nicely with Raikou's ability that reduces damage. It's not seen a huge amount of play, but it used to see a lot of play. And if special energy 
ever gets really, really big, the amount of play it sees could continue to increase in the future. And it's that combination of past glory and future potential that puts Assault Fest in at number six. There is a little bit of a gap here. I think the 10 to 6 cards are good, but I think they are clearly 10 to 6. This next little tier is significantly better, and it starts with number 5, Experience Share. Now, Experience Share never saw a huge amount of play because we had things like Tool Scrapper and Startling Megaphone, and your opponent would just discard Experience Share and then get the KO, and Experience Share wouldn't operate to move a basic energy from the KO'd Pokemon to the Pokemon with Experience Share. But those went away, and then Experience Share got really, really good. If you've got two energy on your active Pokemon, let's say Darkrai from Breakpoint, and then Darkrai gets KO'd, but you've got two Pokemon on the bench of Experience Share, you don't lose any energy. And of course, Darkrai does more damage for every energy on the field, so if you can conserve those energy, that is brilliant. Darkrai has been playing this lately... Of course it has. It's a brilliant option. Also, Xerneas has been seeing this because, of course, Xerneas Break also does more damage for each energy on the field. Decks like Darkrai, which has been amazing, and Xerneas, which has been pretty good, rely on this tool. And that's why I feel comfortable putting it at number five. And in at number four, Bursting Balloon. Now, this has seen a little bit less play lately, just purely because the decks that have been popular have had other tools to play. The ones in the top three, we'll get to them. But Greninja. The thing that made Greninja good was partly Frogadier, partly Rough Seas, partly Talonflame, but partly Bursting Balloon. You're not doing quite enough damage... In comes Bursting Balloon, you take 60 damage or 6 damage counters when you attack them, and it helps slightly lower damage dealing decks to hit those numbers. It saw a bit of play in Garchomp, at least in my Garchomp, nah, Shea Burton was the one who had the idea, but I did moderately well with this at Liverpool Regionals, and it's even seeing play in Persimian. Check out Scott Simmons' Persimian list, there is a link in the description, he played Bursting Balloon, it made the deck better. Any deck that's doing almost but not quite enough damage can really use Bursting Balloon and that's why it comes in at number 4. And there is a big gap between the top 3 and the rest of the field here ladies and gentlemen. The top 3 are significantly better. In at number 3, Spirit Link. All of them. Put it nice and simply, if you're playing a mega deck like Rayquaza, Gardevoir, Mewtwo, etc, either you play Spirit Link or you end your turn every time you evolve a Pokemon. There's not really much else to say. Playing a mega deck, play Spirit Links. There's lots of good mega decks, it's got to come in at number 3. In at number 2, although if you wanted to flip 1 and 2, I would not be mad at you, Fighting Fury Belt. You can only attach it to basic Pokemon, it gives them 40 extra HP, it means their attacks do 10 more damage, it is crazy good. Any decks that really revolve around basic Pokemon like every EX deck just have to use this. It's been amazing in Darkrai, it's been amazing in Eveltal, it's been amazing in Volcanion. I'm not going to keep going, you get the point. Any basic heavy deck, and with the EX format we've had, that's been most of the good decks, have really relied on Fighting Fury Belt. It's too good. It's got to come in at number two. Every basic deck, and that's been most of them, have been playing Fighting Fury Belt. But it is knocked off the number one spot by Floatstone. Floatstone, and again, if you wanted to put this at number two, Fighting Fury about number one, I wouldn't be mad at you. Floatstone is just ridiculous. It gives your Pokemon free retreat. It means those Pokemon that would be a giant liability because your opponent's going to lie sand to them and save a whole bunch of time by just leaving it in the active. Now they're not a liability because your opponent can't do that. Garbodor blocks off abilities, but only when he's got a tool attached. He's got a giant retreat cost, though, so your opponent is going to lie sand him into the active. Save a bit of time while he sets. Oh, no, wait. No, he's not. You've got a float stone attached. It means that when your opponent KOs a Pokemon, you put something in the active with float stone, and then you don't have to promote your attacker until the end of the turn. You keep your options open. 
open. It means that high retreat Pokemon like Garbodor, like Noni X Volcanion, when you really don't want it being Lysander into the active in a Volcanion deck, you can pop a Floatstone on them and then they're no longer a liability. Fighting Fury Bell has seen a whole bunch of play in every basic focus deck. But Floatstone has seen play in every deck. Every deck has to consider Floatstone. I'm not saying Floatstone has been in every single deck list since it was released, but I am saying that every major deck has at least considered Floatstone, and that's why for me it's a clear choice as number one. But if you don't agree with me, it's a very good job. There's a comment section. Go nuts, be nice, but you know my rule with top 10 lists. Give me your own top 10, or at least don't just say these two cards need to be higher. Tell me which cards you would put lower. It is a list, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to rearrange it. Just tell me how you're going to do it. I'd be very excited to see. You can like this video, and you should. You can subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and you should. You can follow me on Twitter, at the Wossy, and you should. I am away on honeymoon at the moment, so if new cards are being revealed, I will get to them very, very soon after I get back, but you're going to have to give me a little while as I get back and get settled, but they are coming. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.